Hi everybody, Joseph here with Bean to Bar World and today I want to briefly talk to you about chocolate and whether it's a fermented food and if it has probiotics. You might read some of that online that chocolate is a fermented food, chocolate has the benefits of other fermented foods. Well let's think a little bit and dig a little bit into that and see if that's actually the case. So before I talk about the probiotics aspect of chocolate, let's talk about the stage where cacao is fermented. That's sort of where this whole idea of chocolate as a fermented food comes from. So let's look at that very briefly. Here I have a section from the science of chocolate. And let's go over quickly the fermentation procedure. It's very brief here, but it'll give you a good outline. Correct fermentation is essential to produce good flavor in the final chocolate. It's a process which the bean is killed so that it cannot be spoiled by germination. So let's look here at this little <laughs> sketch that I drew. So here is the cocoa bean. The, the shell, known as the testa, is in black. The kernel or the cotyledon is in red. And the little green part here is the germ. And so this is what we want to kill so that it doesn't germinate and spoil the seed. That's what gets killed during fermentation. So in addition, certain chemicals are formed which on heating gives the taste of cocoa. Okay, so let's say in addition, certain chemicals are formed which on heating give the taste of cocoa, whereas these chemicals themselves taste completely different or may not even taste anything at all. So essentially, there's components in the seed, molecules, carbohydrates, proteins, that are changed during fermentation that later on will combine to create aroma compounds. Okay, So these are known as flavor precursors and they lead to the flavor but aren't the flavor themselves. So these constituents, these little amino acids and reducing sugars don't actually taste like much or like anything or what we want it to taste but they're important in the flavor development. So under unfermented beans may be pressed to produce cocoa butter but the remaining solid cocoa material is not normally used to make chocolate. So if we don't ferment the beans, they're not going to taste very good. And cocoa butter is very expensive. We can get a good profit from that. So if your initial goal is just to get cocoa butter, you don't necessarily have to ferment the beans. And some of that cocoa butter isn't necessarily used for consumption either. It can be used in cosmetics. Now, a lot of cocoa trees are grown by smallholders, and the method of fermentation is traditional, although in some countries have been attempts to modernize it. Heaps here is a open cocoa pod. You can see little segments of the seeds surrounded by the fruit, the pulp of the cacao. And down here, you can see the whitish ones are surrounded by the fruit pulp, and the dark part here is the actual seed. Now, here is um, some cocoa beans and the heap fermentation under some big banana leaves there. Now let's look at microbial and chemical changes. What actually happens during fermentation has been subject of much research. And even today, there's still a lot of research that goes to understand it. Now this was written a while ago, but there's still a great deal of um, research needed to really understand the mechanism behind a lot of the fermentation. So as the bean shell remains intact, it is not possible for microorganisms to react directly with the cotyledons inside, which are, part, which are the part that is used to make chocolate. So in a way, this is not a true fermentation process at all. So what does that mean? So let's look again at the diagram here. Okay, so here's the cotyledon, that's the red part. This is the kernel, this is the nib, that's what we use to make chocolate. Around it is the thin paper shell we call the testa or the husk. Now when we're fermenting the cacao, what happens is this yellow stuff here is the pulp. This is where all the sugars is, the juices, this is what gets fermented, okay? So let's look a bit more at the anatomy of the cacao bean. We have the germ or the embryo. This is the part that we want to kill during fermentation to, so it doesn't sprout into a new little tree. Here you can see a little diagram here. The germ or the radical creates the root. There's the root that goes one direction and then the cotyledons grow up in the other section here. So you can see how this corresponds with this here. The green sort of grows down, the red becomes the cotyledons, the first leaves, and then it grows into a tree from there. 
Now, yeast and bacteria, we have lactic acid bacteria, acidic acid bacteria, these little purple things are the bacteria. They are what ferment the cacao. So what gets fermented is this stuff. So the lactic acid bacteria, the acidic acid bacteria, the yeast, they feed off of the fruit, this stuff here, and eats away, it ferments the fruit, just like bacteria ferment cabbage to make sauerkraut or cabbage to make kimchi and other things like that. This is what's going through the true fermentation process is the fruit. But the fruit essentially disintegrates and melts away. We don't use the fruit for chocolate development at all. What we use for chocolate development is this red part here, the seed, the cotyledon. Now, look at this. This little hole here near the germ is called the micropile. As these beans ferment in their fermentation heaps, boxes, whatever it is, the metabolites, whatever is released from the lactic acid bacteria, the acidic acid bacteria, essentially the lactic acid, the acidic acid, it makes its way into the cotyledon via the micropile and acts on the cotyledon. So remember I talked about earlier how it breaks down components of the seed? These metabolites get into through the micropile and impact the seed. There's also some studies where if you add other types of flavors or fruits into fermentation that become part of the, the fruit pulp and, and become fermented, those aromas and whatnot will also go into the micropile and impact the flavor of the cotyledon. So the cotyledon itself, the part that we use to make chocolate, doesn't actually, it's not actually part of the fermentation process. It's the fruit that's part of the fermentation process, okay? Also, keep in mind that when we're eating, when we talk about fermented foods, we talk about eating kimchi and sauerkraut and beer and cheese and yogurt. These sorts of things, these, these um, microbes, these probiotics are still alive in these products. They're, they're alive. You can make new yogurt from yogurt. You can just get yogurt, um, mix it into some milk and create more yogurt from it because the bacteria there is still alive. It's still reproducing. It still exists. Well, chocolate is not quite the same because chocolate, first of all, we don't use the fruit to make chocolate. We use the cotyledon. The cotyledon wasn't part of that process. And the seed of the cacao gets dried out, gets roasted, and gets ground up into chocolate. And there's not a lot of evidence to suggest that a lot of these probiotics still exist in this highly shelf-stable food that's been fermented, heated up, um, and, and turned into chocolate. So let's read just a little bit more here. During the fermentation, the temperature rises dramatically. Uh, following the, de the death of the cocoa bean, enzymes are released. These cause rapid decompos decomposition of the bean's food reserves and form sugars and acids. Okay, so again, that those metabolites break down elements of the cotyledon, the, the nib that we use to make chocolate, break it down into smaller molecules, from carbohydrates to reducing sugars, from proteins to amino acids. And that's important because when we roast the cocoa beans later, those small components will form together to create aroma compounds, make it taste really good. So which are the precursors to the chocolate flavor as described earlier. So this process is, however, much more complicated than this as a more unusual, as a more usual fermentation process takes place outside the bean. Here there's some of the white pulp, which is very sugar rich, able to react with the yeast that are also present to form acids and ethanol, much in the same way as occurs during brewing. This ethanol activates other bacteria, such as um, acidic acid and lactic acid bacteria, which then convert it into the respective acids. The ethanol and acids are able to pass through the shell into the bean, right? Through that little micro pile that I was uh, talking about right over here. Enter through there. And this change in acidity hastens the death of the bean. As we noted earlier, there are different ways of fermenting um, and go give rise to different flavors. Okay, so the type of fermentation will affect the overall taste and flavors of the cocoa bean and hence the chocolate. Many other important reactions occur. Proteins and peptides react with polyphenols to give the brown color associated with cocoa. 
whilst the other flavor precursors are formed by reactions during between sucrose and proteins. Of particular importance is the formation of amino acids. Many of the proteins break up during the fermentation into these acids. 20 forms exist, right? 20 forms of amino acids, including valine, glycine, which are very important in the chocolate flavor formation. Okay. So just a little bit of the, fer of the fermentation process there. If you don't know anything about cacao fermentation, if you're, this is the first time you're hearing it, hearing it, it's a lot of information, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview. You can find out a little bit more of that information on my website, beansbarwell.com in the Free Learning Center, if you want to read up on that. And also in some of the books that I offer in my online shop, I also have sections on fermentation to understand a little bit more about that as well. Now, let's look at the idea of probiotics in chocolate. You might see that, you know, first of all, a lot of people say that chocolate is a fermented food. It is and it isn't, right? That, that cocoa bean is part of a fermentation process, but it, again, it's not from, we're not consuming the fermented product in the same way we consume kimchi or sauerkraut and yogurt and things like that. It's very, very different. You might see online that chocolate is a prebiotic. Well, what does that mean? It means that it contains certain fibers, certain foods for the flora and fauna in our, in our gut there. So it feeds probiotics. Chocolate has constituents that can feed probiotics already in our system, but there's not a lot of evidence to suggest that chocolate itself has the probiotic, especially after drying, roasting, and refining that cocoa bean into chocolate. Now, if we look on, let's say we're here on Science Direct and we look up chocolate and probiotics, there's a lot of articles that pop up about chocolate and probiotics. So here we have the evaluation of viability to stimulated gastrointestinal tract passages of probiotic strains and pioneer bioaccessibility analysis of antioxidants in chocolate. Uh, what else do we have here? We have development of potential potentially functional chocolate spread containing probiotics. So here, if you read this up, they're adding the probiotics to that. Uh, survival of commercial probiotic strains and their effect on dark chocolate. Symbiotic snack. So symbiotic essentially is the adding the probiotics to the what's known as the prebiotic chocolate, right? Chocolate contains the components that can feed probiotics. So they're symbiotic in a way, they work together. If you, but you have to add the probiotics to that. So this is just a snack created to kind of create a, a more, um, I guess, healthful food in a way. Um, chocolate is becoming a carrier for probiotics, right? We know that in the dairy industry, yogurts is huge for probiotics. A lot of people nowadays can't have dairy, either they're lactose intolerant or they're vegan. For whatever reason, it's not um, it's not a food that everyone can enjoy. Whereas chocolate, you know, for the very 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 few people out there who might be allergic to chocolate, it's actually a really good carrier for this idea of added probiotics. Um, here we have another research article: laxative effect of probiotic chocolate um, on constipation. Semi-sweet chocolate as a vehicle for the probiotic um, lactobacillus, which is a popular um, probiotic added to a lot of products. Um, survival of commercial probiotic strains in dark chocolate. Again, this is, if you read this, this is something that was added to the dark chocolate. So let's look a little bit into these sorts of things here. So here, this one here, um, evaluation of viability to simulated gastrointestinal tract passage of probiotic strains. Uh, here they talk about how chocolate is appreciated worldwide for its flavor. The study aims to evaluate, evaluate the viability of different um, strains in milk chocolate, 70% chocolate. So here on they go on to say nowadays food uh, that promote health and or help improve the general nutritional status of the consumer become increasingly attractive in the world market. Among them probiotic foods shown health benefits leading to increased consumption. So probiotics are defined as live microorganisms that if administrated in adequate amounts confer a health benefit on the host, being you. In this study here, they evaluate the shelf life viability of potentially probiotic strains in free and microencapsulated forms in two types of chocolate, milk and 70% lactose-free cocoa. 
The resistance of the strains and quantification of the content of phenolics, flavonoids, and antioxidants during the gastrointestinal tract passage simulation of chocolate were evaluated. Sensory analysis of the probiotic chocolates was also performed to verify their commercial viability. So here's the survival of commercial probiotic strains and their effect on dark chocolate, symbiotic snack with raspberry content during the storage and after simulated digestion. Uh, so here we see that uh, cocoa butter is rich in fatty acids, including the saturated and unsaturated ones, free fatty acids, antioxidants, mineral, salts, and vitamins. Chocolate is also a source of tryptophan, serotonin, and dopamine, and positively affects the cerebral metabolic process and endorphin production. So a lot of benefits there to consuming chocolate, not even considering probiotics. Taking all these into account, probiotic chocolates can be considered as an interesting product that meets the criteria of functional foods rich in nutrients and health promoting compounds and the expectations of consumers especially children here's another one synergistic effect of three encapsulated strains of probiotic bacteria on quality parameters of chocolate with different composition so again just a little bit of insight into the idea of chocolate as a fermented food and Keep in mind that when we talk about the benefits of fermented foods, what are those benefits, right? Just because something was part of a fermentation process, does it still contain the components that are known to be beneficial from fermented foods, right? So we're not eating the fermented fruit, the fruit pulp around the cacao. We're eating the kernel, the seed, which was not really part of that fermentation process. And does that seed and the chocolate made from that seed still contain the live probiotics that say cheese or yogurt and other fermented vegetables contain so something to keep in mind something to consider definitely something to look more into my goal here is to not tell you what the right answer is because when it comes to research when it comes to science of chocolate there's a lot of um there's a lot of work that needs to be done so, you know, the, if you want to learn more about chocolate, if you want to learn more about cacao, it's not necessarily finding the right answer because in 10 years from now, that might, be, that might not be the right answer anymore. You have to sort of dig into the information that exists and make a conclusion based on the information that's out there and the information that you've accessed. And so that's why it's very important for anyone who's educating about chocolate to do your homework. You know, you have to, as tedious as it is, you have to sit down, you got to read through the research, you got to read through the books, not just rely on social media. And a lot of poorly written articles on the internet, which never really give you the resort, the references of where that information comes from. You'll see a lot of articles on chocolate is, is a prebiotic because it's part of the fermentation process, but they give you no other information of well, what probiotics doesn't contain. Do we have any evidence do you have any empirical evidence to show that? So something to consider. Again, I'm not trying to say that chocolate is not necessarily a fermented food, but it's not a fermented food in the same way as a lot of other fermented foods. And so if we're trying to educate people on the benefits of chocolate, which there are many, we have to be sure that we're clear about the information that we're getting across, okay? and be clear about the information we have and the information that we don't have. So at this point, it seems like chocolate itself doesn't really have the probiotics, the living probiotics that other foods have, but it can be a prebiotic, which can feed probiotics that already exist in our body. And there's also a ton of other elements as well, the vitamins, the minerals, the high levels, of antioxidants and, and whatnot, which also make chocolate not just a treat, a dessert, but actually a, a substantial, healthful food. So I hope you learned a little bit from this and I hope to talk to you again soon. Download the free Bean to Bar app to connect with incredible chocolate makers from around the world. Also be sure to visit beantobarworld.com, your portal for all things fine chocolate, virtual tastings, free learning resources, research, and much more. Subscribe to the newsletter to stay in touch and donate to the free app and free resources here. Contact me for any chocolate-related questions you may have.